Hello there, my fellow appropriators of relics, and welcome back. Welcome back to another episode of our series of lore concerning famous campaigns and battles throughout Imperial history. I was actually very surprised to see this topic actually win the latest poll, since I assumed many of you already played the Dawn of War 2 games. Either way, for those of you that don't know, the Aurelian Crusades are pretty much the story from those very games, and the protagonists are none others than the Blood Ravens chapter. Now, I might have referenced some of these events when talking about them before, but this will be a more detailed look. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? And we shall obviously begin with the First Aurelian Crusade. The Aurelia subsector of the Corianis sector had long been very important to the enigmatic Blood Ravens chapter, as both a source of new recruits and technology, weapons, and other manufactured items. At an unknown time, sometime in the 41st millennium, an unnamed Blood Ravens force commander, which would later become known as Aramis, and Sergeant Tarkas, launched a deep strike onto the desert feudal world of Calderis to aid Captain Davian Thule and his company. Those guys were engaging a large force of orcs that were threatening the people of Calderis. The Blood Ravens neophytes drawn from the Aurelia subsector were needed more than ever after the Blood Ravens suffered horrible losses in their campaign in the Kaurava system. As the Blood Raven strike force on Calderis drove away the orcs, they were confronted by mechboy Bad Zappa and his mighty war truck. Although the mech escaped, the Astartes collapsed the mine for which the orcs had been assaulting the human settlements on Calderis and did claim victory. The Blood Ravens next attacked from their strike cruiser Armageddon into a hamlet on Calderis where Scout Sergeant Cyrus was waiting for them to help defend against another orc assault. The strike force managed to fight their way to the defender of the hamlet, Sergeant Avidus and his unit, rescue him and save the hamlet from the orcs. The chapter then received word that the orcs had attacked two more key locations on Calderis, and they understood that someone with more tactical skill than a regular greenskin was probably leading them. The first attack was led by a storm boy named Skykilla, and the second by the warboss Gutrencha. After their defeat of these orcs as well, the space marines extracted information from Skykilla and Gutrencha, and discovered that both had visited the Fellhammer mine recently. When the space marines entered the mine, they discovered an Eldar warp spider exarch and his retinue, but they vanished before they could be properly engaged. The Astartes were then rescued from orc gunners by Sergeant Thaddeus. They also found a bad Zappa, again, and his mob under attack by an Eldar warlock and a company of guardians. Although the space marines killed the warlock, the wily orc mech escaped once again. As the warlock died, he spoke of the existence of a far greater threat threatening the entirety of the subsector. The Blood Ravens would then travel to the jungle feral world of Typhon Primaris to eliminate the Eldar activity that was detected on that world. Around here, another warp spider exarch was stirring up the feral orcs of the evil Suns clan. This exarch mentioned nothing of the so-called greater enemy, and later Thule had to return to Calderis. Once again, Mech Bad Zappa was launching an attack against the capital of the desert planet, and its citizens were reporting plants mutating and small purple creatures killing their livestock. The space marines returned again to Calderis and finally killed the orc mech and his units, but they were then attacked by the Tyranids, drawn from a splinter fleet of High Fleet Leviathan. Davian Thule was mortally wounded by a Tyranid warrior, and Tegmarine Martellus led the Blood Ravens on Calderis back to safety after they destroyed the Tyranid attack force. The Space Marines then returned to Typhon, leaving Apothecary Gordian in charge of caring for the badly wounded Davian Thule. The Blood Ravens killed the Eldar Ranger Nemerian, who had been stirring up trouble for the Imperium among the Feral Orcs once again, and then returned to Calderis to kill the Tyranid warrior who had mortally wounded Captain Fool. After all of this, the Blood Ravens were faced by three main objectives to complete. 
gathering a sample of biotoxin from the Tyranids that could then be used as a genetic poison against the high fleet. Then they had to secure data from an ancient astronomical array from the Dark Age of Technology, which could pinpoint a critical weakness in the approaching high fleet. And finally, defending the great hive city of Angel Forge on the hive world of Meridian. Securing the astronomic array granted the Blood Ravens the ability to unleash orbital bombardments and deep strikes. Defending Angel Forge allowed Sergeant Tarkus to gain access to a suit of Terminator armor, and gathering the Tyranid biotoxin added a dreadnought to the Blood Raven strike force, which was actually the revived Captain Davian Fool. Meridian was the target of constant Eldar attacking, and it was ultimately revealed that the Farseer Idranel of Craftworld Ulfwe had been planning to lure the entire splinter fleet of the Tyranids to Meridian using the world's human population as bait. And then the Farseer planned to destroy it and eliminate the Tyranid threat to his craft world at the expense of destroying a vital source of manufacturing for the chapter. Upon completion of their three objectives, the Tyranid biotoxin was ready for delivery. However, the navigators of the Blood Raven's battle barge Litany of Fury, which was coming to reinforce them, were psychically assaulted by the Tyranid hive mind, which placed the vessel in grave danger of becoming lost in the warp. This effectively eliminated any possible reinforcements for the Blood Ravens, at least temporarily. But also the Hive Mind had been weakened by this exertion, and sent its Hive Fleet to consume Typhon's biomass so it might replenish itself. The Blood Raven strike team deployed to Typhon and administered the biotoxin to the Hive Mind through the feeder tendrils. In the space battle high above the jungle world, the cruiser Armageddon was destroyed and the Apothecary Gordian was killed. But as the genetic poison took effect within the High Fleet bioships, all appeared lost as the strike team possessed no means of retreat. Suddenly, Captain Gabriel Angelos and an entire company of the Blood Ravens landed on the battlefield from the recently arrived Litany of Fury. Angelos then joined the force of Commander Aramis, and with his aid they managed to kill the Hive Tyrant Alpha who was controlling the swarm. With the main synapse creature dead, the Tyranid swarm became undirected by the hive mind, and then turned on each other as even the bioships in orbit fell ill and died from the biotoxin. The Blood Ravens had won the day, and the subsector Aurelia and its billions of people had been saved from complete annihilation. The Second Aurelian Crusade Just when everything seemed to be returning to normal in the subsector Aurelia, the warp opened up and spat out the former capital world of the subsector and the ancient homeworld of the Blood Ravens chapter, none other than the ice world of Aurelia. Home to the Blood Ravens ancient fortress monastery of Selenon and many loyal citizens of the Imperium, the planet was corrupted by a greater demon of Nurgle known as Olcair. The Blood Ravens chapter master Moriah had attempted to destroy the demon but failed and the weakened creature was imprisoned in the depths of the Keep of Selenon by Azariah Kairos, at the time just a librarian of the chapter. But the demon's influence proved too powerful, and eventually the shaken Kairos fell to the taint of chaos. Aurelia itself was swallowed by the warp, and its existence in the subsector that had been named after it was all but forgotten. Yet, the ice-encased planet returned to real space in the late 41st millennium, bearing the foul armies of Chaos. These were a warband of Chaos Space Marines from the Black Legion, led by the Chaos Lord Aragas the Pillager, and the former Wordbearer's Apostle Eliphaz the Inheritor, who had been resurrected by the will of the Dark Gods. Captain Gabriel Angelos and the Force Commander Aramis rallied the Blood Ravens Astartes of the 3rd and 5th Companies to face this threat. No sooner did they join combat that the Eldar and the ever-present Orcs rose up to cause trouble along the heretical soldiery of the High World of Meridian's noble house Vandis. Before long, the entire subsector was once again embroiled in fresh warfare against multiple foes, with the forces of Chaos causing havoc at will. As the Blood Ravens scrambled to respond to all these threats, even more dire circumstances came to light, as the Space Hulk Judgment of Carrion returned to the subsector. 
determined to recover valuable intelligence and ancient technology from the Space Hulk to maybe aid them in their fight against chaos, the Blood Ravens assaulted the Judgment of Carrion, only to discover the bodies of fallen Blood Ravens from the Fifth Company, formerly members of an expedition led aboard the Space Hulk by Apothecary Galen. As the forces of Aramis investigated the Hulk, they were shocked to find evidence of Galen's corruption by the powers of chaos. But the truth of the matter was even more insidious. As Aramis and Captain Angelos desperately fought to keep control of the subsector and unlock the secrets of both the Judgment of Carrion and the Lost Planet Aurelia, they were interrupted by the arrival of Apollo Diomedes. This guy was the captain of the Blood Ravens Honor Guard and the right hand of the Blood Ravens Chapter Master and Chief Librarian Azariah Kairos. Diomedes ordered all the Blood Ravens to stand down, an order that both Angelos and Aramis promptly ignored. As Diomedes got increasingly sterner in his orders, Aramis and Angelos continued to resist the forces of the Black Legion, with whom the chapter had recently avoided open conflict for an unknown reason. As his investigations continued, Aramis discovered to his horror that the source of the corruption was none other than Chapter Master Kairos himself, who had fallen under the sway of the greater demon Olcare. Kairos escaped the doomed planet of Aurelia aboard a Space Hulk, and had returned to the chapter with his dark seed of corruption when he met with Galen's expedition. Daring open conflict with Captain Diomedes' forces in their base on Calderis, Aramis attacked Galen, slaying the traitor and his tainted bodyguard of Terminators, a battle that ended in a confrontation with Captain Diomedes himself. Reluctant to accept the corruption of his political patron within the chapter, Diomedes found himself torn, but he did allow Aramis and his comrades to leave Calderis and continue their operations against the Black Legion. The Battle of Aurelia culminated in the death of Eliphaz the Inheritor again. Despite the machinations of Eliphaz, Aramis was able to reseal the demon Olcare in its icy tomb within the keep of Selenon on Aurelia. Even with this victory, Chapter Master Kairos declared Captain Angelos a renegade and a traitor, and Aramis found himself faced with the knowledge that the Chapter Master was a corrupted agent of the Chaos Gods. Diomedes and Aramis returned to the chapter to buy their time, while Angelos fled Kairos's wrath. When the time was right, the third company was determined to return to cleanse the chapter of the insidious taint that lay at its heart. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Aurelian Crusades for today. At least the first two of them. There is actually a third one, but that one is a story for another time. Alternatively, I will just make a shorter video just for it, and maybe upload it as a bonus episode. Are the Aurelian Crusades something you enjoyed playing through in the Dawn of War 2 games? Personally, I liked them a lot at the time, as the campaigns and the mission mechanics felt new and dynamic. I did play through them many times over. Do share your thoughts as well in the comments below. Was this episode informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for future content. Thank you very much for watching, and I wish you all an amazing day. The Emperor protects.